All right. Hello again, adventurers, and welcome to another exciting episode of D and D D Deep Dive. The show we dive did deep into classes, this is subclasses, other features of fifth edition, did Dungeons and Dragons to help you get the most out of your choices. So today. Uh, this one's going to be a bit, a bit weird. Uh, first things first, um, I am taking a very, very s slight break, uh, from my homebrewing, uh, series that we're d -d 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 doing here. Um, it is remarkably d -d difficult to get guests, uh, and I am absolutely, uh, uh b -b -b burnt out. I was actually planning on just taking this whole week off because mental health has not been d -d -d doing great, but... Uh, Dale Kingsmill, uh, who is a genius and is amazing, uh, released a video that gave me an idea. So today we're going to do something kind of really weird for D&D Deep Dive because I'm actually going to be talking about something that tends to be a little bit more DM focused, whereas D&D Deep Dive tends to be a little bit more f -f focused on um, players. Uh, but uh, that being said, quick reminder, if you enjoy... The videos that I make, please like this video. Uh, actually, one of my guests uh, actually mentioned uh, the, the, that uh, something like between like I think it's like five and seven or three and seven uh, additional views per like. Every, every time you like it, more people uh, get to see it. And on uh, William SRD's channel, it actually translates into that number that I can't remember specifically, but it's it's an actual n -n number. Um, I don't know if it'll translate that way on this channel, but it. It's a real thing, so please like the video, subscribe to the, to the channel, hit the bell icon, turn notifications on. All those things are actually important. They make tangible d -d 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 difference. That being said, um, if you are unaware of who Dale Kicka Kingsmill is, um, you have been watching the wrong D&D people, people, because Dale is so much cooler than I am. Um, Dale... Um, uh, Dale was a Geek and Sundry v -v vlogger back when that was a th -th thing, and since then, uh, still does. She did a mythology vlog for them. She still does a lot with m m mythology, but she's also become pretty big in the D and D YouTube community, uh, partially because uh, she got the attention of um, Matt Colville, uh, who is really, really b -b 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 big and has been for for years. Um, and, uh, not, not to mention she's absolutely b -b brilliant and she's a brilliant, uh, uh, dungeon master and, and, and everything. Like she's super, super cool. I absolutely did adore her. Um, she recently made a video called the best way to use weather in dungeons and dragons. And it is brilliant. There is a link in the description down b -b 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 below. I normally don't tell people to do this, but go ahead and go watch her video before you watch this. It's significantly sh sh shorter than my videos because she edits things and has a much higher production Coca Cola. Yeah. You might not come back after watching her stuff, but for those of you that have, um, Everything that Dale says in there is brilliant. Um, and it gave me an idea because what Dale focuses on uh, is kind of how to use weather in a mechanical aspect in your Giga games. And the information she gives in there is really, really brilliant. It made me think about weather in different ways than I have. I use weather a little bit in my Giga games, but nowhere near uh, as effectively as Dale describes it. Um, however, one thing that I do, that I didn't even realize that I did to do in my games is um, I use uh, weather um, and environment uh, to uh, set uh, moods and to get my p -p players feeling s -s 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 certain ways. Um, and that that is not so much a mechanical thing. And I actually don't tend to l -l lean into the mechanical aspects of weather too often um, because I am not a huge fan of making everything a m -m -m mechanic in an, an, an RPG. I think you can, uh, you can be just as effective at challenging the p -p players and creating a g -g -g great, uh, game, uh, 
without having to go, okay, well, that's a plus, that's a plus two to your roll, that's a minus seven to your roll, and constantly putting numbers and mechanics and the, 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 the things into it. Um, sometimes just kind of getting into your player's heads and uh, not only getting into your player's heads, but getting them into a, a certain headspace uh, can be just as effective in challenging the, 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 the them as uh, actually creating really, you know, intricate and kick counters or uh, coming up with really intricate puzzles or interesting th the things to, to challenge them with. Sometimes it's, it's just setting the mood. And uh, weather is such an effective mood setter and, and this is such an effective w w w way uh, to really bring your p -p players into the, 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 the game. Uh, so that's what I wanted to, 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 to talk about t -t 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 today and, and c -c kind of f -f focus on. Um, so something that I l l learned um, relatively quickly, and by relatively quickly, I mean it took me a couple years. Um, but for uh, for any other forever DMs out th there, you know that a couple years, uh, uh, being a DM for a couple years means you are still learning. Um and uh, one of the things that I l l learned is uh, setting the stage and learning how to do it effectively is one of the most useful tools you can have in your D -D DM kick a kit. Uh, because um, I started getting frustrated uh, with some of uh, my uh, p -p players b -b 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 because they were effectively waiting for me to tell them where they were supposed to go. So, you know, I would, you know, they would come into a room and go, okay, well, you're in a room. Uh, there's a door to the north uh, and uh, there's a door to the west and you came from the south. What do you guys want to do? And they'd be like, okay, well, we're going to go to the n -n 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 north. Really? You don't want to look around the room or anything? Well, you didn't describe anything. So, and that's generally what would happen is they would only go in p -p 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 places that I specifically described. And I would change my d -d 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 descriptions to make sure that they went the right way. And it wasn't very f -f fun for me because um, if I, anytime I described this as something, they would automatically uh, assume that meant, well, there, that, that means that that's something and I have to inv investigate it. And it was really hard to surprise my players and and come up with, with interesting things to, to challenge them with because they always would just wait for me to tell them where to go. Um, and it also meant that I had to prepare a lot more, to, 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 to be honest. Because when I put them and had them only going on a very specific path, they got through stuff very, very quickly. And they didn't really explore and they didn't really role play. They just were, okay, well, what's the next thing we're supposed to do? And to me, that's not a fun way to play an RPG in general. Some people, they like that. Um... Uh, but that's that's not me. So one of the things I, I s s started realizing was any time they would enter a room, um, I wouldn't just go, okay, this is a 30 by 40 foot room and here's the uh, exits. The first thing I'll do is, you know, as you cross the, th the threshold, uh, you uh, instantly feel kind of g g grimy. The uh, humidity in the air uh, is thick, uh, but the temperature is l l low enough that it kind of condenses into kind of a slime on your skin that doesn't feel right. As you go in, you can smell the m -m must in the air um, and you can see mushrooms growing from v -v 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 various corners. The cobblestones on the g -g 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 ground are broken with roots growing th -th 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 through them. Obviously, no one has been here in a little long time. Across the, r r uh, across the room, you can see a door set into the wall, but the door itself is hung at an angle and it doesn't seem to be working qu quite the way that it sh sh should. You can see some rot f -f forming on the wood itself. What would you all like to do? That gives them so much more. And in that particular uh, uh, instance, I did describe a doorway. But you can... Be, and something I started doing is I stopped describing doorways and the things like that and go, what do you want to do? Or are there any ways out? Um, well, there's a door over here, there's a d -d door over here, and you just get to these d -d -d descriptions. But by giving that feeling of, well, there's a little slime on your skin from the condensation, the players get uncomfortable. 
and they don't want to be in this room. So something happens that forces them to stay in the room longer. They start trying to find ways to get out of it. And just those little bits of um, little bits of description can be really, really beneficial in getting the players to actually want to explore a little, a little, little bit more. And it doesn't always have to be negative. Like a lot of DMs and uh, me as well. One of the reasons one of uh, my, uh, one of my, uh, my, my first big campaign ended was I was just constantly kind of every time the players did something good. Well, here's the next bad thing that's going to ha ha happen to you. And they never got a chance to, 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 to really relax and have fun and enjoy the fact that they did something good. It was always, oh, you did that and you completed that? Congratulations, here's the next horrible th -th thing. And it became not very fun. Um, so to relate this back to what did Dale was t -t talking about, um, weather affects your mood so much. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know if I want to call this blessed. Um, I was born uh in uh a desert i was i was born in arizona um and uh, i grew up a decent part of my childhood in arizona um uh in the middle of a de 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 desert uh and uh growing up in the de de desert first things first i love the desert i, I currently live in wisconsin um wisconsin is a lovely lovely state do not get me wrong i hate the cold i hate snow I hate all the stuff. I miss the desert. I think the desert is amazing. It is absolutely beautiful. When you when you live in the desert long enough, you learn uh, just the the amazing beauty that is uh, there. Uh, but because I have lived in uh, uh, a desert, I have lived uh, uh, up here in the frozen in the north. Uh, I've gone all the way as far south uh, as uh, Mexico uh, and lived out there for a little, little bit while I was on a missions trip. Um, I've gone all the way to Pacific, uh, uh, Northwest. I've gone all the way to DC. I've, I've been lucky enough to be in a lot of di -di 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 different places, um, and experience a lot of di -di different climates. And the weather is such a mood setter, no matter where you are. And the same weather can have vastly different effects. And again, watch Dale's video, uh, on, uh, just the different ways that in um, in media weather is is, is used, um, but uh, it's it's a hundred percent true that the the same weather can have such a a massive difference. And as uh, a d -d 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 DM, uh, you can use the exact same weather c -c -c conditions. Uh, to set vastly different moods and give the players vastly different priorities for what they want to, 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 to do. To give you a, a really good, 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 good example from my own little life, um, uh, in Arizona, uh, if it got to like the low 60s or the 50s, that was winter to the time in uh, Arizona. Um, and you would wear uh, your winter coats, which by the way, a winter coat in uh, in Arizona is a joke. Uh, we drove from Arizona to Wisconsin, uh, and we had full winter outfits, which were thin cloth gloves and what up here would be considered a spring jacket. And we got hit by a blizzard on our w -w 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 way up here. Um, and we found out very, very quickly that as magical as snow looks, it was the first time I'd ever seen snow, as magical as it looks, it is cold, it is wet, and uh, a little spring jacket does not keep you w -w 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 warm. Um, but there, it was really, really cold. Here in Wisconsin, once it gets, like, I'm not kidding here, once it gets above freezing, above 32 f -f Fahrenheit, you will go outside. Well, back when I used to go out to the side, don't do it anymore. Uh, thank you, agoraphobia. Um, you would go outside in 40 degree weather and go, oh, it's so nice out. And it's the weirdest th 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 thing. Uh, because before I couldn't stand being in the low 50s. Getting down to the low 40s, it was, ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. We stay inside, we light a fire. We make sure we're not d d d freezing to death. And, you know, Wisconsin, we get down to, like, negative 20. 
and then it gets up to above freezing and we're like, wow, this is great. So what I'm saying is a sunny day can be very, very uh, different uh, depending on how you describe it. And the same weather can feel the, the very, very different. You know, the idea of setting a scene a little like this. As you walk out of the tavern, the sun uh, is in the center of this, 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 this sky. You can feel the rays hit your face and uh, at arms and they instantly warm you from the kind of cold uh, mood that the tavern had been covered in. As you come in, you can see the world itself is awakening. This sun uh, hits the grass in front of you and makes it this verdant, bright g -g 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 green. You can uh, see in the sky wisps of clouds kind of going away every so often, obscuring the sun just long enough f -f 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 for it to peek b -b back out and to uh, open up the uh, uh, open up the world again. Compare that to, as you step out of the tavern, you're immediately hit with a wave of heat. It feels as though you've stepped into a different d -d 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 dimension. You can feel the weight of the humidity in the air. It presses against your skin. It feels heavier out side. As you look around, the first thing you notice is your mouth feels a little bit dry. And as you try and just move it around a little, a little bit, and you, you realize that the humidity in the environment is not helping you feel any more, more, more hydrated. And in fact, you feel less as a so. Those little things can massively change how the players will want to play. Just by describing it the, 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 that way, the players are going to feel like the more time they spend outside, the worse they're going to feel. And I haven't had to mention exhaustion levels. I haven't had to... M -m -m uh, give them disadvantage on and, and, and anything just by describing you this oppressive heat. Um, and there's so many different, again, going from a desert to Wisconsin, uh, there are so many different kinds of heat. Um, and it was the craziest thing in the world. In Wisconsin, we have a ton of humidity. So walking out, it very much feels like that. If you go, especially if you go from air conditioning into nothing, but even just going from indoors to outdoors on a, a, a um, uh, on a uh, hot, humid d -d day, uh, even if you don't have any air conditioning or a swamp cooler or anything the thing like that, just going from inside to outside, it feels different. The air feels thicker. And you walk outside and you're just like, Whoa, you feel like you could swim through the air. It's so thick with he -he humidity. It's oppressive. Um, you can't sweat. And so your entire body just feels warm because the uh, humidity is so high uh, the, 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 that you you can't get any uh, 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 anything to to uh, uh, evaporate, which is the entire point of uh, sweating. So you just kind of feel slick and s -s slimy, and it's just not fun. Compare that to uh, a dry heat. Um, I I'll never forget uh, when I was in M -M Mexico, uh, Mexico, we were in Tijuana. Um, we uh, uh, we came out of uh, the uh, the place that we were just staying. I believe we were staying in a, a, a church at the time because it was a it was a missions trip with my youth group. Um, and we stepped outside from the ch ch church, which I don't believe it was was air conditioned, but it was it was insulated r remarkably well, as most buildings will be uh, in the desert. Uh, and we stepped outside, and it was super, super dry. And you instantly feel all the moisture on your skin, in your eyes. Everything just goes away, and you feel like you've just stepped, you've just set foot into an oven. Like you come out, and the air doesn't feel heavier, but the air—it's like your entire body just feels strange. Like you're radiating off anything that that is keeping you hydrated. And you just get out there and, and the air is so dry and it's so hot that you instantly think about sissa sweating, but the sweat evaporates so quickly that you don't even realize you're sissa sweating. It's just gone. Um, so yes, just sticking to one type of weather, talking about 
uh, uh, hot weather in general, sunny blah, 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 weather in general, you can really set the m -m -m mood and get the players thinking very, very d -d 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 differently. Um, going, um, uh, uh, Dale actually classifies four different uh, weather types uh, in her Viva video, and I think it works relatively well. Uh, but she's got hot, she's got dry, she's got cold, and she's got wobble wet. And I think there's a lot of overlap when you actually look at how wobble weather works that you can play. Like you can have hot and wet, or dry and cold, uh, or hot and dry, uh, or wet and dry. Like there's, uh, uh, like that sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, moving to another t something that's used over and over and over again in cinema, in, in, in movies, TVs, theater, uh, th th things like that, uh, is rain. Rain is such a, a, um, uh, a, a, I can't think of the word. Um, uh, uh, it, it can be used in so many d -d 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 different uh, ways. Versatile, that's the word I was looking for. It's such a versatile uh, weather pattern because rain c -c can be um, uh, a mood dampener you know it's raining outside and everybody is sad or it's raining outside and it's just kind of draining the emotion uh, out uh, of it you can use this as the rain you know uh, uh, as you're uh, uh, as you're walking uh, uh, along uh, b -b -b beside the wagon the rain is coming down uh, it's not uh, incredibly heavy but it's persistent you can feel each drop as it sticks in your hair and makes uh, all of your hair weigh down your your uh, cloak that is uh, keeping you as, as dry as it can feels 10 pounds heavier as the rain sticks to the little nooks and crannies before washing off of it. The few bits of your your uh, clothing that are not obscured by the cloak uh, are damp and weighing you down. This whole thing makes them feel very weighed down in that Whereas uh, changing it up just a little bit, as you go outside, you can see the rain starting to f -f 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 fall. The grime of the battle you just got out of is slowly p -p peeling away. You can feel the rain removing the grime and b -b 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 blood f -f 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 from your hands. You can feel the weight of battle slowly being poured off as the cool, refreshing r -r rain renews you and gives you uh, additional uh, purpose and energy to move f -f 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 forward. Going even f -f further, the rain is coming down in heavy sh -sh sheets. Every time you look up, it comes and slaps you in the f -f 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 face. Uh, every time you look around, you check to see if it's cut you. The rain coming by so sh -sh -sh sharp that it feels like it's actually cutting through your skin. Every time a new blast of wind c -c 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 comes t -t -t towards you, it feels like the rain goes through your armor, through your skin, to your very c -c 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 core. Your fingers at the tips start feeling cold and n -n -n numb. Your toes are starting to lose f -f 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 feeling. You can feel every time you inhale uh, it feels as if you're drinking the air as opposed to b -b 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 breathing it. Every so often having to cough a little b -b 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 bit to ensure none of it goes into your lungs. You know, all of these are different versions of rain and each one is going to make them feel a little bit d -d 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 different. Going into the idea of dry, uh, specifically for d -d -d Dale's descriptions, are winds and d -d 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 things like that. So... You know, the idea of as you come outside, uh, a, a cool breeze goes uh, uh, across your face. You can f -f feel it whipping your ha hair around. Uh, on the breeze, you can s -s smell uh, the uh, new grass and a little bit of, of, of ozone from this, the uh, storm la -la -la last night. As it gets more into windstorm, the wind comes through and it hits you like a ha hammer. As it uh, hits your front, you are, are forced to kind of cover yourself. As you stand up again, every step you take is a fight, is a struggle against very nature itself. You feel it pulling at your legs. You feel it gripping your arm, trying to wrest away any bit of loose cloth. Your cloak itself uh, is, a, uh, is a battle. 
uh, uh, is in the battle with you as it tries vainly to stay attached as the wind tries to strangle you with it. Going into the most extreme, something like a tornado. I agree with Dale at this point. When you get to uh, or tornado or a wildfire or a flood or something like that, that turns into an event of itself. And you know, setting the mood. You can hear the wind howling around you. You can see small nipples starting to form in the clouds above you. The uh, light itself has turned a sickly color of g -g 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 green. And you can watch as the clouds above you start to rotate s -s slowly. You see one of the nipples start to elongate and move further down and down as the funnel cloud gets closer and closer as it nears uh, the ground no more than a couple miles away. You can see the dust and the dirt from the ground itself leap up to meet the funnel cloud. In front of you is a massive tornado. What would you like to do? These things are really, really great in modifying how the game works. And it doesn't always have to be outdoor weather. There is weather inside as well. Like I said, I, I describe dungeons a lot of times using smells as a really, really good, good, good way um, to, to, to uh, get into people's head because smell is one of the most effective triggers of my, my memory. Um, so using uh, using uh, smells to get them uh, uh, into the mood you know uh going into a place as you as you uh step into the room you instantly smell this acidic rancid s -s 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 smell obviously there's something has died in here and gone r -r 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 rancid you know those things will get people for the thinking will instantly you know other little uh, uh uh details that a lot of people don't think about but are absolutely real um you get this strange sharp uh, sharpness in the b b back of your throat as you inhale the very bitter s smells of whatever uh, uh, has g g g g gone on in he he here. Things like that are great ways to really uh, get your players invested. You know, your eyes blink as they sting a, l l l l l a little bit. Things like th 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 that. Um, so yeah. Uh, like I said, um, Dale's video is absolutely brilliant and you need to we'll, we'll watch it. But I think just as is important as kind of the mechanical aspects that uh, weather can provide you is just the mood setting aspect and, and learning how to uh, get your players into a, a certain m -m 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 mindset simply by describing the weather in a, a, a certain way. It will make them play differently. If you describe uh, the rain as you know so thick and and, and f f feeling like it's it's cutting into them and it's going through their armor, they're going to do whatever they can to get out of the rain. They're going to actively be looking for things that they can uh, hide under so that they can weather out this, 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 this storm. Uh, if you're talking about uh, uh, snow, if you talk about just the magical. Uh, uh, mystery that this is a snow is and the the miracle that it uh, uh, seems uh, they may be a little bit more interested in exploring a river around talk about the newfound snow let them see uh, you know little to detracts from rabbits or did the deer in the, the there uh, talk about icicles uh, uh, hanging like little sets of cookie Christmas lights things like that um, use a lot of simile and metaphor um, these are some of the most potent tools that you can you, you use to get people uh, into s -s certain moods because uh, they both uh, will uh, help the uh, players better understand what you're saying. You know, words can do s -s so much, but similes, uh, in v -v -v similes and m -m metaphors invoke emotion instead of simply just word p -p play. They evoke memories and they root things in experience. Um, so yeah like i said um watch dale's video if, if, if you haven't uh yet it's really really b -b 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 brilliant um, but after watching it come back here and uh think about how you can use weather to just set the mood before you get into the mechanical aspects of it just setting the mood 
will get your players playing in different ways. So, anyway, that is going to be all for me today. As always, again, like, subscribe, turn, uh, hit the bell icon, turn notifications on in the comments down below. What is your favorite weather type? Um, does it need to be favorite as in the one that I enjoy the most, but the one that uh you 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 you, you um remember the, the 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 most could be positive memories could be negative memories could be something in between let me know in the comments to the down below um this week uh this is going to be the only of a video uh because again mental health ain't doing that great so i'm going to take some time off just to kind of uh, uh relax hopefully be able to uh, get me another giga guest for my next uh D, D deep dive homebrew uh series i will be coming back to that hopefully next week we will see. Otherwise, again, it's all for me today, and I'll see you guys in the next time. All right? Bye-bye.